Welcome, everybody. I'm Jen. I'm Tammy. And they call us Woo. I almost forgot I was supposed to say that. Sorry. (laughs) So today we are going to talk a little bit more about our background. We'll talk a little bit more about each other um, and how we kind of, I mean, we talked a little bit about how we got to know each other and stuff like that, but uh, just kind of our experiences and what led us here and why we're doing this podcast now. Um, so I don't know if you want to start or if you'd like me to start. I can certainly start. All right. Um, so it's interesting to look at like how people see themselves. I always think about this when we're, when we're talking because Mm -hmm. the original idea you said, let's talk about each other because we, we don't, we don't see ourselves the way that other people see us. Nobody ever does. And the first thing that I always think about when I think of you is like how gifted you are at teaching other people and how gifted you are at showing people kindness and compassion when they just don't get it. Like, which is the best thing when it comes to teaching. Um, I think that's probably why you were a teacher. Um, That's probably also why you run a business, because when you run a business and you have employees working for you, part of our job is teaching them like Mm -hmm. how they can shift, how they can change and the things that they're not sure of. Oftentimes they come to the owner. Um, But so like the first time that we were in that um, panel in front of the students together, and people were asking us questions and you were answering questions. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, she is so insightful. Like you're just so insightful and so approachable. This is going to be a crying episode. <laughs> this is going to be a crying episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like not lay it on too thick, but I can't help it when I talk about you because I really do. I admire the way that you connect with people and the way that you allow them to ask questions and actually request with your presence that they ask questions when they don't understand. I even see that when we're in business meetings. Like if somebody has a question, they're like, oh, I'll ask Tammy because you are so approachable. And if you don't know the answer, you're like, oh, I don't know that, but I'll figure it out. Like, no problem. So like, that's one of the things that I want everybody to know about you. But the other thing is like, you are so freaking gifted at massage. Um, I've always been very picky about who I have work on me. I have a few massage therapists that I work with. And um, when, when you allowed me to come work for you when I closed my business, um, like the first massage I got from you, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so good. Like, why haven't I used her, her services before? Like, you are so good at your job. And one of the things that makes you so good at it is that you don't recognize how good you are at it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like legit, when, when you were working on me the first time, I'm like, oh, she totally feels the energy moving. Oh, she totally feels this. Oh, you can tell she knows that these people are in the room with her, like all these spirits that are here. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? Like, when I brought it up afterwards, you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But you just naturally have these gifts to like blend into the body and sense what's moving and what's not moving and like just like the way that you connect with other people you're like inviting the body to share and tell you hey this is what i need right now and it's just it's a beautiful gift that i think there are a lot of there are a lot of people who are in healing professions they have that ability but a lot of the time they're either too confident with it or they are too afraid to fully accept it in and you you're just like this is the way that it is whatever <laughs> like and and i think that's a beautiful thing it's not that it's um it's it's just beautiful to watch and it's beautiful to feel when you're on your table and i i just admire you so much for so many different things like we had um we had a day that you and i went to a crystal shop one of your friends crystal shops and we were in the car and we were having this deep conversation about different things and ethnicities and things that are going on conversations yeah (laughs) 
this one in particular, though, was talking about, like, where you grew up and, like, Mm -hmm. where you feel comfortable and how you interact with people because you grew up in a very diverse area. And I remember thinking when I was younger, I had my parents had um, property that was kind of similar diverse area to where you were. It might actually be a pretty pretty close close. to yeah yeah and and i remember when i was younger like i was so sad that we couldn't be there because i wanted to get to know different people and i wanted to get to know like how other people lived and how other people interacted because i saw in the diversity in the area where my parents had this house like people interacted so differently than in the suburbs where i was I remember like, that was super interesting when you told me that because it's like, I guess I never thought about it that way before. Because you yeah. don't know what you know when you're growing up, right? And you know your exactly. environment. Yeah. But I would see people like getting together and sitting outside together mm-hmm. and like dancing together. And you brought that up when we were talking. And I was a little bit jealous, like, not going to lie. I was super <laughs> jealous. I was like, I wish I would have grown up with Tammy because then I would have <laughs> these experiences. And I just love the way that you present yourself because you have had these other experiences. You've interacted with people from different cultures and different, like, different upbringings. Like, you can interact with anybody because you have that background. And I think that's something that when people grow up in different areas where they're not exposed to different cultures and they're not exposed to different economic situations and you just don't learn how to fully interact and fully relate with people. That makes sense. And and I just like, again, it's something that I admire about you, just the way that you carry yourself. It does make you more approachable. It does make you um, more knowledgeable on topics that I wouldn't know how to approach. So when we're when we started talking about having this podcast and talking about interacting with and talking to other people who've had other experiences, I'm like, this is going to be awesome because Tammy knows how to do that really, really well. <laughs> I like talking. And, yeah, <laughs> but so well, do you. So it's all good. <laughs> I do, but I think that there is a deeper level of understanding and a deeper level of connection that you have with people because you've had so many other experiences. That makes sense. Yeah. And like, I mean, honestly, every time. I think people are fascinating. I, I think that's why I enjoy interacting so much. People's stories are genuinely interesting to me. They're very interesting. And I think that's why I remember stuff about them so easily because it's all fascinating. Like people are so interesting if you listen to them, you know, I mean, I don't know, but thank you. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Well, like then I think it it was the end of that little trip that we took together that you just kind of threw in there. Oh yeah. And I'm fluent in sign language. And I was like, what? (laughs) I honestly thought you knew that. I thought you knew that. (laughs) Like, there are so many interesting little things about you that nobody would have any idea. One, just looking at you, you wouldn't know. Like, (laughs) because you talk and, like, everything's just, like, you just put everything out there. But I had no idea that you knew sign language. I had no idea that you had a lot of the experiences that you've shared with me. And I'm very excited for people to have the opportunity to learn from you. Because I think that you can bring a different perspective and you can bring people together on a different level. And it's just like, I am so excited that people get to hear from you and get to hear your story on this podcast. And like, anytime they meet you in person, like, I think they need to just ask you for one little snippet of information about you. And it will be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like, I need to know more about this woman. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You got me with that last part. (laughs) Um, That's, thank you. Thank you. I, like you said, we don't always see ourselves the way other people see us. And um, I didn't honestly think I was that interesting. Not like I don't think I'm an interesting person. Like, I don't know. I just... I'm just me. I don't, I guess I don't go around and be like, you know what's super cool about me? Just because I, that's just the way I am. You Um, should. 
<laughs> but that's funny because as you're talking about this whole like massage thing and stuff like that and teaching, um, like with massage, that's the thing is like, I know I'm good at what I do. Do I know all of the other things that I'm doing at the time? Not necessarily, but I'm learning. <laughs> but I know to trust that I can figure it out, that, you know, whatever's happening is supposed to happen, but also that it's not all me. Like, I can only do so much. I'm like the facilitator. I can't force someone's body or um, energy or anything to do anything that it doesn't want to. So mm-hmm. it only makes sense to try to kind of convince the body and energy to let let me help. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Which yeah. is probably similar to the way that you would approach things, I think. Yeah. I, but you're right. I don't, as far as like some of the other things that are happening, or especially like, you know, there's a good segue into all the awesome things about you. The the other entities that could be with me at the time, I am unaware of that. I've had occasional things since we've been communicating, but not, I mean, not anything like the gifts that you have. Um, mm-hmm. But thank you. <laughs> for all those things i really well, appreciate you thank you i appreciate you too otherwise i wouldn't say those nice things <laughs> thank you um the funny thing is some of the things you pinpointed about me i feel like i appreciate in very similar ways about you um i one of the main things i always think about when i think of you is kind of like what you're describing you're just you i mean I wouldn't necessarily know if you didn't tell me the struggles that you have sometimes with, I don't know, interacting with normal people. (laughs) (laughs) Because I think you're just, I think you're perfectly good at it. Honestly, I think you're perfectly good at it. And um, what I appreciate about you is um, you are always you, no matter what the situation is. You are very true to yourself your positivity doesn't feel fake because there's something really unnerving about fake positivity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yes. the put upon, you know, the the fake sunshine and stuff like that. It feels more like off-putting than it does drawing you in. But I think you draw people in as much as you probably think that your weirdness turns people off. I love weirdness and maybe that's why I was always like she's amazing. <laughs> But I don't think it does. I think it's I think it's more like the people who are not ready to hear what you have to say are the ones who are maybe like, mm, I don't know about this. But I think that's kind of true of everybody. Like, we're not for everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything you say, it's like, no matter where you show up in my life, no matter if it's, you know, just casual, we're hanging out together, no matter if it's in networking stuff whatever it is you always show up as you and it feels like you don't care whether or not people understand at the time you're like I'm gonna love you anyway (laughs) I'm gonna love you I'm gonna shine my positivity upon you no matter who you are or whether you like me or not whether you understand or accept it it doesn't matter and you shared really beautiful stories with me about people who didn't understand at first and were kind of scared of you and ended up, yeah. you just showed up. You showed up as yourself. You showed up and you shown the light that you just can't hide. <laughs> and eventually people were like, I get it. I understand where you're coming from and what you have is beautiful. And your friendship and the things that you've helped me with has been tremendous. Because we met at a time where I was starting to explore some of these other things. I was starting to acknowledge some of the ways that um, being raised the way I was might have been harmful towards my growth. Um, and trying to be really open-minded about things. And, um, the gifts you have are tremendous. Uh, reading your book, which I'm going to shout out really quick. If anyone wants to know more about Jen, there's this book, A Life Lived Medium, a psychic's journey from fearful to almost fearless, which is amazing. It helped me understand more what it really felt like to feel like you were just 
misunderstood or you just didn't know how to connect with the things that you were given. And I'm understood more that the person I saw when I met you was someone who not only had grown a lot, but I feel like that's my gift is to be able to see past any like fear that people have and just see who they really are. And you've Mm -hmm. always been the same to me, even though you're like, I've grown. I'm like, you've always been awesome. I don't know about (laughs) you, but you've always been awesome. But I mean, I could just ask you anything. I could ask you anything like crazy things about like, wait a minute. So how does the world work? You know, (laughs) what is, what about heaven? What about like all of these other things, these ideas that people have? And interestingly enough, because of having some hard subjects that I was kind of working through trying to kind of understand where, like how we all work together in the universe. Um, there was things that I was really afraid of talking about that I knew I could talk to you and you were never, ever going to judge me for it and you were going to answer me. And if you didn't know the answer, one of your guides was going to be like, all right, she wants to know this. Let's come through, (laughs) which is really, really cool. And the times that you helped, you know, when you worked with me to help like move things, like the time that we had that beautiful session where you connected to my higher self. And at the time, I might not have got the answer that I wanted, but I got the answer I needed. And it comes back to me all the time in the way that things have shifted for me since then. And on a more personal level, the times that you have shared your gifts when it was periods of tragedy in my life, when we lost people. And I don't think I can begin to describe like what a beautiful gift that is to give people um, to go from just feeling absolutely heartbroken having lost someone and have this message come through that just makes you understand that they're not only still connected, but they know everything that's happening and you can know how they're doing and you can have this peace that you just won't get any other way without these messages. Um, it's a really beautiful gift. And I know you've done that for other friends and clients of mine, and they've all expressed the same thing. It's like just this immediate weight being lifted off of you and the weight that comes from not knowing, not knowing if they understood how much you love them and you miss them and not understanding if they were okay, you know, and all of those things yeah. like, it's beautiful. Like you've helped us heal in ways that I don't think I will ever be able to express my full gratitude for. And the thing is, is you just, you don't know how awesome you are either. <laughs> like You just show up and you do this stuff and it's just who you are. Um, you know, talk about, you know, teaching and stuff and being a good teacher. I think you are a much better communicator than you think you are. I know you taught for a while, too. I'm sure you were a much better teacher than you thought you are. Um, You might want to ask my students before you say that. (laughs) You know, it's fair. I had had a few students that were unsure about me in in the beginning, too. And once they realized the method to my madness, they're like, oh, she's okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, um, But you just, you're a light. You're a shining light and the fact that we're on the same wavelength about a lot of things because it's both of our mission to share as much positivity positivity and healing as we can in the world and connect people with other people who can do amazing things, um, yeah. yourself included. Um, it's just, it's been a relationship that I like you said last time we talked about this, it's, I didn't even realize how important it would be to me. Um, but I, I appreciate your heart. Like you're just a big old walking heart. And that's, (laughs) that's really an amazing piece of you. And everyone who sees it is drawn to it and understandably so. And the people who don't understand it, they will at some point, you know, and if they, if they don't, that's okay. Usually it's just our own stuff, right, that we're going through that makes us not understand sometimes, but you shine anyway, and that's the best part of the whole thing. 
So. I do like shiny things. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I can't help it. They're so distracting. It's like, oh, shiny. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Probably why you're into crystals and stuff, too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I just, every time we have conversations, we end up having, like, this big mushy, like, I love you oh. fest. And I... It's one of the things that I love about our relationship because mm -hmm. even like when we talk about things and I don't think there's been a lot of things that we don't disagree on, but like even when we're having a discussion and we're like throwing different things out there, we always come back to this place of like, you're my girl. Like, I love you. Like, mm -hmm. I just completely love you because of who you are as a person and because of how open you are to accepting other people's perspectives and how open you are to accepting new people into your your energy field and just loving up on them and i i think we're on the same page with that absolutely 100 yeah. percent. yeah it's interesting because i know both of us have had challenging experiences um in our lives in you know even challenging ones as we have gotten to be closer friends but having somebody that you not only connect with like that but also um you know that there's nothing there's nothing you can say that's going to change their opinion about you yeah. is kind of awesome because you already like yeah. know that person on a soul level so you know that there's nothing that could change your opinion about them yeah. and you don't always get opportunities to know people that deeply in life i mean i no. have I have my husband, my daughter, I have a really close friend I grew up with my whole life. You know, you have people out there that you're really connected with that way, but um, I feel like I'm kind of lucky to have that many people because that's not always the case with a lot of yeah. people. And anytime you find that, you kind of have to hold on to it, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't care what happens at any point. Like, I just feel like we're always going to be connected somehow. And we probably were in that. the past. I don't, I mean, it would be cool to find out. But I'm guessing yeah. we probably have always had some type of orbit where we ended up intersecting. <laughs> yeah. For different well, periods. and I mean, we tend to come back to our soul families in every lifetime that we're in. We make contracts with people to come back and assist us in our healing or in our journey like where we're at. So chances are like you and I were like, hey, we just need some love in this lifetime. Can you like contract with me on that? Like, yeah. let's just sign this deal, shake on it. Mm -hmm. And maybe next time we're going to be cr killing each other. Who knows? But like, it's <laughs> going to be whatever that. we need. <laughs> well, you know what, though? That is part of the cycle of like the soul cycle is when we go through lifetime to lifetime to lifetime, we walk with these people who are willing to do anything to show us that like you're loved and that you're love. And so sometimes in your specific incarnation, the person who you think hates you the most or that you dislike the most is the person who is actually showing you like a different aspect of love. Like it's everything is about the experience that we're having here. Mm -hmm. And so Sometimes you'll contract with somebody to come in and like be the love of your life. And in the next incarnation, they're going to be that person who like stabbed you in the back and did something awful to show you a different perspective and to help you learn whatever lesson is that you're you're wanting to learn in that incarnation. Mm -hmm. So seriously, I think that there's probably incarnations where we've done these horrible things, things that our human brains would think were horrible, but at a soul level, we're like, that's what I needed to see. Like, yeah. I need to understand that side of, of living so mm -hmm. that I can enjoy this side. Mm -hmm. So, so I fully expect that we like did some horrible crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we're at the part now where we're past that. Know, we'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least no, in this is, lifetime. <laughs> it is interesting, though, because I um, I know, like, we both have experienced things, too, that were very painful. But again, you know, on the other side of it, that was, of course, what we were supposed to take away from it. Um, and it is supposed to help you grow. But it's kind of interesting, even as I was, like, going through hypnosis and stuff like that. So 
the gal that we'll be talking to next week actually is a fantastic hypnotist, uh, hypnotherapist. And it was interesting because we did some regressions and she was talking, we were talking afterwards and she was saying how some people will regress all the way back into previous lives. And I just got this really strong feeling where I was like, I don't think that actually matters. I think what I'm doing in this life is actually the most important part of my journey right now Mm -hmm. because there is shifts and changes that have had this like beautiful effect throughout my whole family. And I know there's the, the thought process too that healing yourself can heal 11 generations forward, 11 generations back, but it's been amazing because my husband's going through this big thing too like it's very intertwined like I don't know that either of us would have gone down this path without each other as well as with my daughter and it's super interesting because you can see the ripple effect you really can like when you start to heal things um and kind of level up you can see all of these amazing things happening with people around you too Like, um, I see it in Gabe's family a lot. Um, I see it in my family too. But the interesting part too is you also get to a point where you're like, you don't hold on to whether or not they're going to heal in this lifetime anymore. Once you get to a point, you're like, it will happen. I can't force it to happen, but it'll happen (laughs) at some point, you know, where you just, you don't hold on to that anymore. It's not because that that's a thing that I've struggled with for a long time. Um, And through hypnosis, I was really able to come to terms with the fact that I've had, you know, these empathic qualities since before I was born. And when I was little, I didn't always understand what was mine and what was somebody else's. Yeah. So I had to learn that. But also part of that process and caring a lot about the people around you, sometimes that can caring can turn into control where all of a sudden you are so absorbed in whether or not this person is doing this thing or learning this thing or whatever. And even if you can see exactly what's going to happen and you know, it's going to be bad, they can make that choice anyway. (laughs) Because like you said, sometimes the bad things, quote unquote, aren't necessarily things that you're supposed to be saving them from anyway. They needed those things. And it is interesting too, how just healing yourself can also change your dynamic with the way that you allow other people to heal where you maybe were single-mindedly focused on um, giving them ease that might not have been what they needed and that's been a very interesting change in being able to just let go of what's going to happen with people and just trust that If you're doing the right thing for yourself and you are trying to offer as much uh, care and healing as you can, you know, you can physically do yourself for control, um, but allowing them to just do whatever they need to do with it, it just gives you this like beautiful freedom, like a whole different perspective on the whole thing. It's super cool. It is. And I mean, they always talk about the oxygen mask thing. If the oxygen mask mm-hmm. falls down in a plane, like you have to take care of yourself first before you take care of anybody else. And it's it's the same thing. Like if you're if you're constantly worried about making sure everybody else is cared for and constantly worrying about how they're responding to things and how they're responding to your response to things, like mm-hmm. you don't ever fully care for yourself. You don't fully look at your own stuff so that you can heal. And it's like, that's one way that we can take care of ourselves. People think when they hear that, that whole thing about the oxygen masks, they're like, oh, well, I need to rest and I need to eat better and I need to exercise. And they put it into those very physical terms, but it's also emotionally and energetically caring for yourself as well. Because if you're constantly energetically caring for somebody else and a lot of empaths do that they're constantly caring for other people's emotions and constantly caring for the situations around them they don't give themselves freedom to Mm -hmm. heal and i i think that's one of one of the amazing things about working with other healers and having the ability to talk to other practitioners as we're going to is that you get to hear different perspectives on how to energetically heal yourself and how to heal yourself in an emotional capacity, mm-hmm. not just this physical human realm, this right. 
this meat suit well, it's that all were one and the same, right? Like yeah. people don't yeah. always realize that you can't separate those two. Yeah. Um, when you are working on one, you're working on the other, and that's just always the way it is. Yeah. But it is, um, it is true and interesting, you know, talking about this idea of like caring for other people. Cause I do think that sometimes, cause it's always easier to care about what other people are doing than look at your own self, right? That's always easier. And it's really hard to be honest with yourself sometimes. And yeah. my whole process I felt like kind of started when I was in massage school and we were going through, um, a segment about energy work and this might seem super simple and straightforward for some people, but just when we were going through this idea of our own personal energy versus universal energy versus the energy of other people, this idea that you could hold your own energy and you didn't have to give it to anybody. And that when you're working with people, you can be using universal energy, not your own energy. Yeah. And that you really have control over every, you don't over all of it, you know, your own personal energy. You don't have to give it to anyone. And it sounds simple, but it was like mind blowing for me where I was like, wait a minute, you're telling me that I can care about other people. I can take care of other people and I don't have to be exhausted. I don't have to be drained at the end of the day and I don't have to carry their crap with me. It yeah. was like, it, it sounds yeah. simple, but it was huge. I was like, whoa, how do I do this? <laughs> this is so yeah. cool. Because that was my process for so long. I didn't know any better. And to be frank, we're taught sometimes that that's what we're supposed to do. Um, yeah. Especially as, I think, as women, as um, just people in general, I feel like, are taught that a lot. But I think it's a little stronger in women that um, you are supposed to care about everybody before you care for yourself. Yeah. And then people get confused when you're like, okay, put on your oxygen mask first, fill up your cup first. People don't always understand what that means. So then they get this whole weird dynamic of like, so do I just need to be selfish? Yeah. And that's, it's mind blowing when you realize that you can give all the love you want to in the world without having to also take back any of other people's weight and burdens and hold it on yourself. Yeah. Which admittedly is harder to do with people that are really close to you, but it's possible. It and that was the whole thing that led me to hypnosis too. I mean, it was years of kind of my own inner work. And then I started the beginning of the year just feeling like I, I w was feeling stuck and I needed some type of shift. And um, that was really the whole reason I went. I was uh, trying to figure out, I'm like, I need to figure out why I don't take care of myself as well as I take care of the people around me. And that's been part of a process that has just completely changed me. And everything leading up to it made it so when I was in the hypnotic state and we were talking about different things and going through regressions and stuff, which is super trippy, by the way, being in a hypnotic state and having your subconscious and your conscious mind both working at the same time, super trippy, but <laughs> really cool at the same time. But it was like my conscious adult mind as my subconscious mind was processing these really early memories. It was like instantaneously, my conscious mind was like, I get it. This makes sense. And now I know why this happened and this happened and this happened, why these patterns were happening. And it was like everything, it was like this little missing puzzle piece where everything all of a sudden started to make so much more sense. And it's funny because I've talked to some people since who were like, a little scared like they think it's super cool but they're also like I'm a little afraid of what I would what I would remember going through regressions and I was like well first of all she told me all this beforehand but I didn't fully understand until I went through it I'm like first of all you're probably not going to end up where you think you are you know like it's not necessarily yeah. these big traumas it's things that you interpreted a certain way depending on you know the the time frame you were in um, so personally I had, um, suspend your disbelief here. I had a womb experience, uh, experience when I was a newborn one and two years old. Mm -hmm. And all of those were connected to an emotion and all of those made so much sense. And it, none of it is what I would have identified with my conscious mind as being a point of trauma for me. Yeah. So that was the interesting part, but also like, oh my God, it's so much better to know than not know. 
I keep telling people that. I'm like, I know it's scary, but I promise it's so much better to know. It's so much better. Yeah. It's not like I don't still have the same processing. It's not like I don't still have work to do. It's not that I don't still have some of the same triggers. I just handle them differently, which is amazing. Yeah. And it's easier to handle them, which it's just like a level of peace that I don't think I've experienced before. So I haven't gone through all of this stuff and I'm like, I already knew that there's amazing things in the universe. You, I mean, even getting to this point, you have helped me tremendously as well as some other um, stuff that I've done. But now I'm just excited. I'm like, so if this is how this feels, what's going to happen when we keep going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this is yeah. amazing. It's, and I am so flipping excited to share with other people that there is things that you can do. Hypnosis might not be the answer for you, but it might. Um, mm -hmm. It might be part of your whole process, you know, talking with a medium, all of the other things that we've talked about so far, talking with um, someone who does, Reiki who does the cool things that uh, Jill's doing. That might be part of your process. And that is going to unlock something in you that you are not going to want to go back. You told me that before, actually, now that I think about it. Maybe. <laughs> I remember when we were talking about gifts and I was like, I'm actually kind of afraid because I don't want to open a door I can't shut again. And you were like, well, you can always shut the door, which made me feel a lot better, by the way. <laughs> you're like, well, you can always shut the door, but once you open it, you're not going to want to. Yeah. And it was a scary thought, but I was like, dang it if she wasn't right. <laughs> like, yeah. the opening the door is so much better. Like, you don't want to go back. You're like, I feel like I know so much more now. Like, well, I think about all the times that, like, I've just been super stressed out and I've kind of shut myself down and I've just, like, closed off, closed that door a little bit. And I hear nothing. And I hear spirit all the time. There's always spirits around me. There's people talking, chattering in my ear all the time. And there have been times that I've chosen to shut it off. And there have been times that I've just been so stressed or so overwhelmed with something that it just shuts down naturally. And all of a sudden I'll be like, oh gosh, what's wrong? Because I'm so used to it. And I enjoy <laughs> it so much having this extra information. Mm -hmm that when it's not there i i don't know how to be like i do not know how to be normal jen because this is <laughs> this normal is, jen. i was gonna say that is normal like, jen. <laughs> but when i don't have the things that i've grown up with and i don't have the extra the extra information and the downloads and the connection with spirit i just don't know how to live normally for me <laughs> Yeah. And so, like, I can't even imagine when people are like, oh, I want to shut this door. I'm like, why would you want to do that? Like, <laughs> I've been through so many things in my life that weren't, th I had a lot of fearful moments growing up. But still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything because I've gotten so much out of it. Mm -hmm. I've been able to work with other people and help them understand things that are that are happening in their lives and around them and help them refocus and shift so that they can be in a space of joy and happiness rather than in a space of fear or in a space of disbelief or anger or like when you're constantly in connection with spirit, when you're living fully from a soulful space or from a heart centered space, like there is no going back. When you do go back, you're like, what the heck did I just do? Like, where am I? Who are these people that are so gosh darn crabby? <laughs> <laughs> My Midwestern stuff gosh came out darn again. It. Gosh darn it. <laughs> That's okay. me trying to censor myself so I don't say the F word. <laughs> I, know. Uh, <laughs> I know. We've been doing a very good job so far <laughs> yes. censoring ourselves. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, you know, that's kind of what I was saying before, too, is you, I don't think you always realize what you offer people either. I, I mean, on a soul level, you do, but there's something about your realness and humility that's very important, too, because when you are trusting um, someone is giving you important messages, 
which can be really hard to understand or believe sometimes, that person has got to be real. You know, they have yeah. to be real. They have to be feel trustworthy. And I think when ego gets involved, it just screws everything up, you know? Yeah. Because I, I've met people who I think have beautiful gifts, but they... At saying they know it's not really the right way to put it, but they, uh, maybe they inflate certain things or maybe they want a gift so bad that they are pretending that they have it, which yeah. all generally just comes from, you know, people who are feeling uncomfortable about themselves in reality, right? Like any of the, you know, kind of arrogant things that we think about are usually people who just aren't super comfortable with themselves. They really want something to be a certain way. But I've actually had an interesting experience, um, which we will probably have to talk about another time. But um, like when I got my first uh, Reiki attunement, so um, for everyone out there who's new to the Wu level, so uh, Reiki has um, different levels that you can learn. Excuse me, I'm just getting over being sick, so I apologize if I sometimes have to clear my throat or cough. Um, anyway, so Reiki has these different levels. Reiki is just a form of, uh, energy work and, uh, there's different types. Yusui Reiki, I believe is the most common thing that yep. you hear about. Um, but it's an ancient Japanese, um, way of, of working with people's energy and trying to balance out chakras. So... When you get attunements, you're going up different levels. So the person I got my first attunement from, I actually had um, a really um, weird and not necessarily great experience after that, where I ended up having some uh, like physical sickness as well as some other things that were happening, which I realized after the fact was... Um, especially because I, I know someone who was in that particular class with me who had the same experience I did, um, was because of the person who was doing it. So there was, a, we didn't think about it at the time, but there were ended up, once we kind of assessed it, we're like, okay, there was a lot of ego involved. Also, there was a lot of things that, um, maybe she was carrying some things with her that she was proud of having with her, but weren't necessarily beneficial. <laughs> Thankfully... Mm. I understood what was happening. I understood because, I mean, it was really kind of a potent experience. Um, I understood what was happening. And afterwards, when the dust had settled and everything, and I kind of cleared myself of all the, the stuff that had hung on to me after that, um, my friend had asked me, she's like, are you going to do your attunement again? And I was like, you know what? No, because the attunement was fine. It was the person who was doing it that maybe had kind of the wrong ideas or perhaps wasn't just energetically balanced um, in the way that she should have been. So I, you know, accepted that part of it, but also realized that there's people out there that sometimes you do have to be a little wary about. Anyway, that t whole tangent was coming back around to the idea that people need to be able to trust what, you know, someone who is offering them some type of um, healing are actually doing like what their intentions are and in this world of you know like social media TikTok, like there's a lot of people who might put themselves out there as something because it gets yeah. them views or it gets them um money or whatever it is what it is i mean they they're walking their own path that's fine but you have such a sincere presence about you and being able to trust that you have all of the right intentions and you literally are just trying to love up on everybody <laughs> is amazing. It is. And Thank I'm really you. excited to learn about more people because I know there's tons of people you know that I've never met or talked to before. I'm super excited to interview them with you and learn more about what they have going on. And it's kind of funny. Like you said, you're like so on the woo side sometimes and I'm, you know, kind of a little on the other side of things where I'm totally open to all of it, but I don't have the years of woo experience like you do. <laughs> I'm very excited to see who you're going to bring in and who we're going to talk to. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'm I'm super excited for next week when we get to talk to Angie. Um, I don't know if you want to give people a little preview <laughs> exactly like who Angie is um, sure. and her business, so then we can we can talk about what's coming up next week. And absolutely. So um, Angie Angie Kircher is her name. Um, she has been doing uh, hypnosis. I, honestly, I can't remember how many years. I'll let her t- I'll let her explain that part of it. But um, her history was, or is, that she's um, an RN who has been working in the field for a long time. She's been working in hospice for a long time. And especially through all of the, you know, things that have changed over the past three years, um, she decided that she really wanted to do something that felt like a deeper level of healing for people. um, Because she started to feel like, you know, maybe it was just putting a band-aid on things. And um, so she decided to, to get into hypnosis, having also experienced some stuff for herself that really made her feel like this was an important thing to do. Um, but I appreciate that she, so I met her in, we became fast friends before I even explored any hyp- hypnosis with her. I really didn't know a lot about it. But I appreciate that she doesn't necessarily feel like doing just kind of the I mean, there's there's some benefit to doing the hypnosis with, that's just suggestive thought. People want to quit smoking, stuff like that. However, her belief is that unless you get to the deeper root of things, like why you were, you know, kind of coping in an unhealthy way in the first place, like what is that thing you're coping with? If we can figure that out, if we can figure out connections to your past and the way that you've dealt with things through your life, and then we can heal that on a subconscious level, then... You don't really need those coping mechanisms anymore. So that made a lot of sense to me. And after we had been talking for a while, it just kept coming up in my head. And I just asked her a million questions. So hopefully she'll have an opportunity to kind of talk through some of the stuff that she does next week. But she really does have a gift. And she's very passionate about what she does. And she's got a lot of integrity, which is super important for me because I would not have trusted somebody (laughs) to do that if I didn't really trust in their integrity levels. Yeah. Um, but she, um, you can do uh, online sessions with her and you can do in-person sessions with her. She is um, in Minnesota and, uh, you know, she'll do either one. But um, she also does a lot of, like, she gives you audios and stuff to do so you can do your own practice at home as well. Um, so she does and does some coaching. So she does kind of like a whole approach to that where she'll go through the, um, hypnosis sessions with you. I believe she does six or 12 sessions, but then she also doesn't just like leave you hanging. She helps you kind of figure out what to do next, how to navigate that stuff, and then how to make connections to help you cause, help cause like a permanent shift. So I'm very excited. I'm really her. excited to talk to her. I went in and talked to her a little bit about what a session looks like. And I'm really excited to hear more from her because I think she is a very genuine person. She really, really wants to help people. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I've i met a lot of hypnotists in the past. Many of them were for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> they See, were the, the people only who, thing I knew about it. <laughs> So those were the people who made people cluck cluck like like chickens. (laughs) And I know one person who was turned into a gorilla and went and sat on people's laps and started picking things out of their hair. Like, I've seen all of those hypnotist things at conventions and things like that. But to have people that you know that are using those gifts, using that skill to help people heal is Mm -hmm. a whole nother thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm very excited to talk to her next week because I I just like her so much and I know, right? I really appreciate what she does. Well, and she coined the most awesome phrase, uh, "woo curious," which she told me about <laughs> in one of the sessions. I was like, I love that. It's so so true. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a lot of our listeners. Yeah, exactly. they're woo curious. Exactly. <laughs> so. Well, I am excited too. I'm happy that we get to do this. Um, and yeah, we'll continue to have other cool people on to interview, but throughout this process, we'll be talking to each other too, because that's what we like doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and 
We want to thank everybody who is listening today. Make sure that if you like everything that you've heard or even just some of what you've heard, um, subscribe and always check the show descriptions and make sure that you look for any links or codes that we've talked Mm -hmm. about during the show. And remember, everybody, you are wonderful just the way you are. And that's why they call us Woo. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Have a good day.